coming up on the Doctors Hospital podcast. A patient with hypertension have five times more risk of mortality in a, in a heart attack. A patient without hypertension, diabetes increase ten times, and smoking increase twenty times wow. the risk of mortality. Right. At Doctors Hospital, our lamp just got brighter. The Loyalty Advantage membership program now has three unique plans to choose from. From lamp prepaid with free prime care visits and service line discounts, lamp insured with copay waivers and zero upfront collections at the ER and inpatient services, or our new lamp access, a free plan that offers 10% off lab, pharmacy, and imaging. Lamp has a plan for everyone. To sign up, visit our website or give us a call. Doctors Hospital, trusted and best care now. Welcome to the Doctors Hospital podcast. We are happy to be back. Uh, we've taken a break for a while and we're relaunching and we're starting off with Heart Health Month, which is celebrated in February. So our first guest back in our new season of the Doctors Hospital podcast is Dr. Alejandro Mezquez. Uh, he's a cardiologist here at Doctors Hospital, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about his history, his background, um, and then get into some some information about um, cardiology and heart health and what we can do to help take care of our hearts. So welcome back to the show. I don't think I think this is your second or third time that we've done the podcast with you. Yeah, no, no, it's the first time for me. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the invitation. Mm -hmm. Alex is 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 right for me to be here. Um, thank you. Yeah, we're happy to have you on. I think we've done maybe a lecture series that I think with you before, um, but I know we've had some conversation in, in the past. So one of the things I know we haven't ever really delved into is kind of your background and your journey to becoming a cardiologist. Um, I find it interesting when you talk to, to physicians, especially, you know, as to what drove them to make the decisions that led them to where they are in their careers. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a cardiologist? Yes. So, so <laughs> a long way, yeah, but I am cardiologist. Is my, my passion mm -hmm. is, is, is I like very much, and I made my my uh, residence in cardiology in Argentina, mm -hmm. and then uh, I did a, a, I I went to France to, to make a residence in interventional cardiology. Mm -hmm. Uh, then Barcelona, uh, two years working in uh, big hospitals, high technology, high level in Europe. Uh, I uh, came back to Argentina, mm -hmm. uh, four years uh, in, in Europe, and I work in my province in Salta, Argentina long time in the public hospital mm -hmm. making cardiology um, interventional cardiology long long time cardiology is, is a great uh, specialty for for doctors mm -hmm. for me it's great because my my feeling is i am helping people um I can help uh, many people, many patients with very simple decisions mm -hmm. and improve, improve the life, improve uh, the situation of the, the patient. Right. So, so what, what inspired you to become a cardiologist in the first place? I know sometimes people talk about, you know, it might have been a family member, it might have been um, a mentor through your training that kind of led you to it. But what was what was the inspiration that led you to to pursue cardiology in, in particular, and then interventional card cardiology as well? Yes, maybe maybe I I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a long time, but I don't remember a, a special a, a person that mm -hmm. with the influence with with that like a mentor for me. Right, cardiology was my passion. It was just something you were interested yes, in. Yes, no, no, 
And interventional cardiologists, yes, I remember my 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 chief in my residence in Argentina. Mm -hmm. uh, very good doctor, with very impressive uh, antecedents, and uh, a very good guy. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he uh, uh, had influence in my decision to, mm -hmm. to, to do interventional. Right. Right. Okay. Awesome. So, I mean, you know, you told us a little bit about, about your background. What is the, the day in the life of a cardiologist look like? So what is, what is your typical day look like in terms of, you know, um, where you go about seeing patients and, and how that looks for you? I know some, obviously some people in the field work 16, 18, 20 hour days. So what does that look like for you? Yes, my day is, 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 is very nice <laughs> because I start to work at around 8.39, mm -hmm. uh, first with, uh, I made the uh, echocardiograms mm -hmm. in, for patients in hospital or ambulatory patients. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, I, I, uh, I can see a patient in my office. Mm -hmm. Consultations, control, follow up, uh, and then uh, stress test mm -hmm. if if there are patients that are for for this study. Uh, uh, maybe Tuesday and Thursday we uh, make uh, the interventional cardiology procedure mm -hmm. at operating room. Uh, coronary angiograms, coronary angioplasty, peripheral angioplasty, uh, and this is my 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 day for operating room. Mm -hmm. And maybe two p.m., three p.m. I I am ready to to come back home. <laughs> okay, all right. That's not bad. It sounds like a a, a very balanced approach to, to doing medicine yeah, they think yeah so good but <laughs> yeah really, a lot of crazy stories really, out there yeah really really i i i we we work with uh, emergency mm -hmm. we uh, the, the, the the patient care have no time right uh many times we work uh very early in the morning mm -hmm. uh uh, no, no sleeping. Right. So you're right. So you're in a you're in a position where you would be on call for certain certain things that that land in your type of space. So you do have that middle of the night. You get a phone call and you have to get up. And, yes. And head so, in. Yes. Yeah. Many many times, it, my the the relation between cardiology and emergency room mm -hmm. is very very close, mm -hmm. very strong because if emergency room service have a heart attack or right. an arrhythmia or patients with cardiology problems, mm -hmm. they call me and we work uh, hand in hand. Time. Yeah. Awesome. So obviously February is Heart Health Month. Um, can you shed some light on the significance of Heart Health Month? why it needs to be something that we focus on um, and just why, why it's important. Okay. I think February is, is very, very important for cardiologists because we can talk directly with, with people, with the population mm -hmm. about the, the importance of the cardiology. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, worldwide, uh, here in Bahamas, the leader cause of uh, mortality mm -hmm. is the cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. And the control of the risk factors is, is very important. And of course, the, 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 the patient care, because prevention is great. We, we need to talk, we need to work very much in prevention of risk factors mm -hmm. like hypertension, diabetes, right. obesity, 
اسموکینگ دایت بات also we need to 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 teach to the people and doctors about the patient care mm-hmm. because uh, if a heart attack is very common and the mortality of the heart attack depends on the time of consultation mm-hmm. if the patient with chest pain delay 12 hours to make a consultation to go to the hospital okay the 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 prognosis is totally different right. than the patient one with one hour right. two hours yeah so it's it's similar to i think i've heard that when people talk about strokes there's a there's a window in which if you get care within that two to three hour window i can't remember the exact amount is that it gra- it, 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 it drastically changes the potential for a positive outcome once you get beyond that certain time frame. So it's the same thing with heart attacks. It's the same. It's the okay. same thing. The window time is, is very important. And stroke and heart attack, mm-hmm. uh, the treatment many times depend on the time of evolution. Right. So, I mean, it sounds like then if you have particular risk factors and you have you know people say they have the like the left shoulder pain or they have the chest pain that's something that you shouldn't take lightly then yes patients uh, we uh, we are working very very well at doctor hospital with the chest pain stratification mm-hmm. is 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 not the same a patient with hypertension diabetes a uh, previous heart attack or, or myocardial infarction and right now chest pain again uh, the risk is totally different mm-hmm. uh, this for these patients we need to do an ecg immediately of course a, a medical examination mm-hmm. uh, the lab works also is very very important mm-hmm. and uh, with the with this result we can decide with with what, what is the best option the best treatment right for, for the patient right because ultimately that's what you want to get to is making sure that you you take the right treatment course depending on the the specifics of the patient yes right. of course okay so what are some of the most common um heart diseases or heart related conditions that people face and what are some of the risk factors i know you mentioned already hypertension obesity diet smoking um but in terms of just highlighting some of the specific heart diseases what what are what are the most common ones and what are the risk factors yes it's a, it's a very good uh, question because uh, for example patient with chest pain chest pain is an emergency mm-hmm. always um for patients with chest pain the hypertension diabetes mm-hmm. uh, smoking is is the, the 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 main risk factor right uh, for example a patient with hypertension have five times more risk of mortality in a with a heart attack mm-hmm. than a patient without oh, wow. hypertension diabetes increase 10 times and smoking increase 20 times wow. the risk of mortality right um is because we need to to work mm-hmm. with this uh, problem the people is very smart and, and they understand quickly uh, where, what is the benefit of mm-hmm. uh, control the, the high blood pressure mm-hmm. a good medication diet exercise healthy life yeah that that's wow that's that's amazing though the um the 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 risk factors drive up the the rate of mortality so much because if you if you have someone who has all three and they have a heart attack that makes their risk factor for for mortality incredibly high mm-hmm. um so I, i ask you know controlling risk factors becomes um, um as much of a, a part of this um process as anything else so how um like it leads me into my next question how can individuals proactively manage their heart health 
um, to try and prevent cardiovascular disease or heart disease? Yes, I, I, I think uh, the people and doctors many times need to, to understand the great value that the hypertension control, good treatment. Hypertension is the, the most important risk factor mm -hmm. here in Bahamas, 80% of population. And it's very important to to uh, uh, to be clear with the patient about the treatment. Mm -hmm. The treatment have three issues: okay. diet, exercise, mm -hmm. and medication. Okay. But if the patient just take the pills, mm -hmm. but no diet and no, no exercise. exercise, the medication no work. Mm -hmm. Diet and, and exercise will will help to the medication very much and will improve the the, the, the result mm -hmm. a lot. Also, patients with with diabetes and and hypertension can develop a cardiomegaly mm -hmm. with the time. Chronic evolution of hypertension provoke the, the, the enlargement of the heart mm -hmm. and the evolution with shorter of breath, with arrhythmias mm -hmm. is very common and very important. Uh, maybe coronary artery disease and cardiomegaly is the both the situations are the more common mm -hmm. situation here. Okay. Now you, you mentioned diet and exercise. Um, you know, I, I imagine there's a misconception around um whether exercise is something that is safe to do if you have a diagnosed heart condition. So what does that look like? If like if if I'm somebody who's suffering, I'm not, but if I'm somebody who's suffering from heart disease, you know, what what sort of and I imagine this this is gonna vary to, from person to person, but what kind of exercise regimen would I even able to be on as a part of trying to manage my heart health? Because I imagine, you know, you don't want to put too much stress on the heart. So how do you how do you kind of manage that that process of saying you need to exercise, but to do it in a way that's safe? Okay, it's a great, great question because many times the people, the doctors say, Oh man, you need to 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 make the exercise. Right. And the the the, the patient say, Okay, doc, what is the best option for right. me? But um, and the, the, it's, it's great because right now the medicine is changing mm -hmm. and everything is changing. That's true. <laughs> and the medicine also. Uh, the, the, the management of the patient is different. Mm -hmm. Right now we work like a team. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, at, at Doctor Hospital, we work with with neurologists, with with internal medicine, with nephrologists. Uh, but uh, nutritionist is very important, very mm -hmm. important, and rehabilitation services. Right, because the patient with coronary artery disease or with cardiac disease need to start with a training program, mm -hmm. smart training mm -hmm. program. Uh, many times the patient think about exercise like a, in the gym, right. making it. No, many times the patient need to, to make a, a, a cardio program. Mm -hmm. Uh, for that, the best option is a professional service mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, making this this activity. We have a, a great team at Doctor Hospital. Uh, um, it's not a, 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 a expensive. It's it's a very nice place. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good option for patient. But right now, the team. Is very important. Right. So you mentioned um, 
changes in medications and, and the treatment process for heart disease, which is a good segue into my next question. Um, you know, are there any recent advancements or innovations in the area of cardiology and the treatment of heart disease that you find particularly exciting or promising, whether that's a, a treatment modality, um, a medication, an approach, um, a, a method for even diagnosing? You know, is there anything new in this space that you find particularly interesting or exciting? Yes, cardiology in, in particular is a, a specialty that move around technology. Uh -huh. uh, right now, uh, we have a great innovation in echocardiograms, uh -huh. and equipment, machine, high technology. Uh, we can do many, many studies with that. Uh -huh. We, we can take a lot of information, very important information from the patient. Also, the interventional, the endovascular procedure, mm -hmm. uh, improving a lot. The, the technology right now is high level. We are working with, with stents, mm -hmm. coronary and peripheral stents, high technology. Uh, um, you know, the endovascular procedures take a, a, a big part of the market mm -hmm. right now. 90% of patients with coronary artery disease will go to, to endovascular procedures. Mm -hmm. Just 10% uh, of patients for open heart surgery right the technology and the innovation in endovascular uh, treatments is is high mm -hmm. and very very exciting and the best is we can we are working with this high technology uh, right now mm -hmm. at the hospital with very very nice results with uh, working very very Right. So that was going to be my next question. You know, how are these advancements um, helping or impacting patient care and patient outcomes, especially? Yes, of course. Yes. The impact is great. I a few weeks ago, I I read a, a paper mm -hmm. that published a, a, a group of Princess Margaret doctors 25 years ago. Great. Oh, wow. Yes. Great information, mm -hmm. a great paper. And uh, these doctors at this time report a mortality in myocardial infarction around 20%. Okay. Right now, uh, patients without uh, endovascular treatment. Mm -hmm. Right now, 25 years after that, our mortality is around 2%. Oh, wow, that's a major change. Yes, yes, it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we need to, to, to understand doctors and people and patients and government that we, we can change the future, we can change the, uh, the, 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 the mortality mm -hmm. rate with this technology. And this technology is not very expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Bahamas, it's, it's great because the NASA, the patient with chest pain, can go to the hospital in mm -hmm. 30 minutes. Right. Uh, we are a team 24-7 right. uh, <clears throat> waiting for the patient, ready to, 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 to uh, make the, this uh, procedure. Right. That changed the mortality clearly. I was very, very nice for me to, to 
read this this paper from mm -hmm. DM8 because for 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 doctors for government for people the information is great mm -hmm. we need to to know what happening right now what happened to take decision and uh, 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 with impact mm -hmm. in the population wow awesome so i yeah, I don't. I don't want to move away from the the, the technology advancements conversation. Um, because I I want to mention, you know, we offer in February the hospital offers discounts on both the CT coronary angiogram and the calcium scoring test. So for you as as a cardiologist, can you kind of just give us some um idea of what those two tests are? and what their role is in the process of helping to diagnose heart disease. Yes, this the CT angiogram, coronary angiogram is, is very important for patients low risk. Mm -hmm. um, the calcium score is, is very important also to, to, to understand the risk of the patient to develop a coronary artery disease mm -hmm. in the next year. And I think this whole studies need to be part of the evaluation mm -hmm. in every patient uh, over 50 mm -hmm. um, with risk factor. Right. Uh, is very easy, very quickly, no no problems for the patients. The patient can uh, walk mm -hmm. in the same day that right. the patient made the, the, this simple procedure. It's a CT scan, very, right. very easy. It's in and out. Okay. All right. So you're, if, if I guess if you're seeing a physician and they think that you may be at risk, this would be something that they would recommend that you do, either the CT angiogram or the calcium scoring test. Yes, I think the 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 CT angiogram, coronary angiogram, uh, have indication in every patient with risk factors, mm -hmm. uh, uh, without chest pain, right, or with atypical chest pain, uh, will be very important because. If the result is abnormal, mm -hmm. we can think uh, what is the best protocol to 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 share with this patient because uh, a critical point is the the revascularization mm -hmm. is to open the coronary artery to block it right. Is uh, restore the, the blood flow to normal level. Mm -hmm. um, for these patients, high risk without chest pain uh, is the CT coronary angiogram is, is, is an option. Of course, if, if the patient has chest pain, um, hypertension, diabetes, maybe the protocol will be different mm -hmm. and the patients need to do an echocardiogram, stress test, and eventually a coronary angiogram by catheter, mm -hmm. no, no CT to, <clears throat> to try to, to fix. So one more thing before we wrap up, um, I always like to ask about patient stories. because I find physicians always have at least one or two interesting um, or impactful stories with patients. So, you know, ha has there been um, a memorable or meaningful patient interaction or patient story that you have that um, you can share before we close up? Yes, I, I, I have more than 20 years working <laughs> like a you, have, you have a lot of patient stories. Yes, <laughs> more than 10,000 10, uh, coronary and geoplasty. Mm. Uh, wow. Yes, a lot. And I remember, I remember a patient with coronary artery disease, a young patient, and many doctors say, 
here in Bahamas. Okay, my friend, you need a cardiac transplant. Mm -hmm. You need to go to to United States or Miami, mm -hmm. or I don't know. Uh, you need a cardiac transplant. A very young guy, you know, mm -hmm. a very young patient. And we uh, work a lot with this guy. We did a echocardiogram, stress test. We did a coronary angiogram. And this patient had three vessel, three coronary arteries uh, blockage. Oh, wow. Uh, we we did uh, angioplasty and stent in the in this patient, and uh, before the procedure, the ejection fraction, the the, the function mm -hmm. was around thirty percent, twenty five thirty percent. Three months after procedure, the ejection fraction. Right now is normal, around seventy percent. Oh wow! No cardiac transplant. Of right. course, this guy, is, this guy right now is uh, working mm -hmm. uh, uh, with a normal life, mm -hmm. with family, and I think is is great. Is very uh, emotional. Yeah, it's, it's life saving stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. And I mean, for our audience at home, and I think I have this right, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I keep telling people I'm not a doctor, I just play one on TV. But the, the stent process is one where you kind of redirect the flow in the artery, right? So you, you block it. So there's already a block, but you basically kind of create a, a diversion to go around the block to maintain the blood flow, correct? No, no, no. This is a... Play, a, a, play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> this is a coronary bypass. Okay. So the stand process, the stand is, process is different because we go through the plaque, through the ah, plug, and we expand it. Yeah, okay. Expand the stand and the balloon, and we open the the the, the, the coronary artery. Okay, um, and the blood flow is normal mm -hmm. after after stand. See. This is, ladies and gentlemen, why I only ask the questions. <laughs> um, so I want, I want to thank you, Dr. Mezplez, um, for joining us today, taking time out of your busy schedule to, to jump on the podcast with us. Um, glad to have you on for the first time. I'm sure we'll get you back on in the future to, to kind of go a little bit deeper into, into conversations around cardiology and whatnot. But i um, very, very grateful to have you on as we relaunch the Doctor's Hospital podcast. Okay. Thank you very much again. Uh, I think we need to... to to show mm -hmm. the result or work uh, doctor hospital we are working very well on cardiology problems and the people need to know about that yeah. we we try to 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 treat the patient the management of the patient is here at bahamas in mm -hmm. nassau no refer the patient to other countries right. and i think it's uh it's, it's great for for bahamas and the, the bahamia awesome and just a reminder for our our listeners and our viewers um we do offer our doctor's hospital a 50 percent discount on the ct coronary angiogram and the calcium scoring test during the month of thank you during the month of february um, so if you are referred by your physician that you need to get one of those done, you can have those done at Doctors Hospital as a self-pay patient for 50% off. If you are insured, you have copay waived for both um, diagnostic tests. So be sure to take advantage of that during the month of February, all during Heart Health Month. Thank you again, Dr. Mesbless. Thank you to our audience for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Doctors Hospital podcast.